next team is really working to, um, to rebuild the internet that is, uh, is usable for agents in a really interesting way. So please welcome to the stage from HDR, Ty. So agents are cool. I mean, it's kind of like the whole reason we're here today. And, and everyone's like so excited to put them into everything from like really simple things, you know, like reading and summarizing a document, to stuff that's like way more complex, stuff that's like multi-step, you know, like running code. But if you've been paying attention to this space, you know, or like the news or like you know, certain YouTube reviewers, you know that like the agents have a problem. And that problem is that they don't w always work. In fact, actually, the frequency at which they work goes down the longer, the more complex, you know, like, really like the more valuable a task is. Like, look at this chart, right? Even an agent that chooses correctly, the correct thing to do 90% of the time will fail even a slightly complex task of about 10 steps, three out of five times. Now, is, is that acceptable? No. No. It's not, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable because we don't measure the reliability of software in 60, 70, 80%. We measure the reliability of software in nines. 99.9999, you guys get the idea. And you know, the thing is, like, we're not going to escape this problem with more AI. Because uh, this isn't a problem of having enough data or being able to get enough GPUs or even like, finding some sort of like, perfect prompt. Fundamentally, like, this is a problem of statistics. Like, AI is just very fancy stats. But you, know, you can't solve a stats problem with more stats. The only way you can solve a stats problem is with engineering. Hi, uh, I'm Tynan, uh, but everyone, everyone calls me Ty. Uh, and I am the CTO and co-founder of High Dimensional Research, uh, along with my two wonderful co-founders, uh, Gates and Matilda. Um, you know, I've spent my career doing AI research, you know, like writing code, publishing papers, you know, all that fun nerd stuff. Um, but I've been really focused on making a AI systems more reliable in production. And I spent a long time working in aerospace and defense. You know, that's like an interesting place to do this because, uh, you know, that's a, that's a field where a bad model decision doesn't mean that the wrong ad gets served or, you know, maybe a, an email accidentally ends, ends up in a spam filter. AI, aerospace and defense is a, a place where bad model decisions are quite often, I would say, um, matters of, of life and death. And so, you know, I understand this problem really well and I care a lot about it. And the core insight I, I took away from it uh, is that we should only really be using AI when, when absolutely necessary. Now, right now, people expect agents to solve a, a problem from scratch every time, even if that agent has already solved it before. But what if they didn't have to? What if we could design a system, you know, design some, some infrastructure, that tracked how agents solve problems and then stored their solutions in a shared library so the next time any agent encounters that same or you know, some similar problem, it could rely on solutions from the past rather than having to figure it out from scratch? Well, that's exactly what HDR has done. We call this shared library the Collective Memory Index. It's a general purpose solution that enables deterministic executions of agents on the web. Now, I'm gonna talk more about the collective memory index in a second, but I just wanna say that for those of you who hear the phrase memory and think context, it's not quite it. You know, we're doing a lot more here than just you know, running rag and putting stuff into a prompt. So you know, it's, it's demo day, and um, you know, what's demo day without some demos? Um, so what I'm about to show you is like, it's pretty simple for a human, but it's hard for an agent. Uh, I'm, gonna show, I'm gonna ask it to buy me something. I think it's headphones, if I remember correctly. Um, but the reason that this is complicated for an agent is that this is about a 10-step task, right? So it has about a 3% chance of working if I was just running this raw, running this without the collective memory index. And it would be pretty crazy, right, to get up here and show you something that worked only 3% of the time. Let's see, there we go. You see, like, whenever you know you hover over a drop-down menu, enter your username and password into a login screen, or put your credit card details uh, into a checkout flow, well, these are all like tiny little interactions. And so when an, when an agent does them, we turn these tiny interactions into tiny programs. Ooh. Turn these into, into tiny programs, and then we string them together. We combine them so that agents can do more complex, longer-running tasks. Collective memory uh, gives developers a new superpower. It writes the, lets them write flexible code for the web. 
By leveraging collective memory, a developer can dial up and down the determinism of their uh, application as needed on the fly. If an application is asked to do something well known, we put it on Rails. But when things change, like the internet so often does, or it encounters some sort of weird edge case, the applic uh, their applications can leverage almost any AI, not just custom built large action models for the flexibility it needs to get the job done. So, you know, without collective memory running, right, this is about 3% uh, uh, success rate. Uh, you know, but, you know, you did it twice, doing it twice, works once about, you know, every thousand times. So, you're like, you know, that's, that's the, the power of, like, of what we built, right? We can, like, collective memory allows a developer to take a 70% model and turn it into a 99.9% .9 model. We think that every developer, not just an AI engineer, should have this superpower. You know, but if we're being honest, uh, how all this works under the hood, it's kind of a bit complicated. And you know, developers, they hate complicated. You know, they don't want to sit down and spend hours learning something, some tool before they can actually use it. They want real value right now. And so you know, we realized that as we were building the collective memory index, as we were building our browser engine, that actually we had all the components we needed to build the framework. So that's exactly what we did. We built a framework. We call it Nolita. It's named after one of our favorite neighborhoods here in New York. Uh, and it's open source. Um, with Nolita, you know, devs, any dev, you know, not just like an AI engineer, but like literally any dev, front end, back end, full stack, whether they know AI or not, whether they care about AI or not, uh, can use this to get started, you know, not in you know, weeks or months, but in, you know, in the weekend. And then when they're ready to actually take their agents and put them into production, they can come to us, buy access to collective memory so that their applications, they just work. So, you know, we're raising. We're scaling the team. Um, so if you're an investor, uh, you know, come and interested in what we're building, come chat with us. But, you know, like more importantly, you know, we're not really a, an agent company, right? We're, we're an index company. So if you know hackers, devs, portfolio companies, eager to build workflow automation, next gen RPA, or like honestly, like literally anything that interacts with the human internet, you know, please, please come talk to us. We'd love to help this next wave of companies build the future. Thank you.